So what we're going to do now is we're going to return back to the Image Stream Gang case study. If you recall, Image Stream, Image Stream Gang is a case study that we looked at a number of weeks ago when we were talking about parallel streams and completable futures. And I had walked through the implementation of the Image Stream Gang for the other variants we talked about. We, we talked about uh, the parallel streams version of Image Stream Gang. We talked about the completable futures version of Image Stream Gang. And now what we're going to take a look at is uh, an Rx Java implementation of Image Stream Gang. And if you recall, what Image Stream Gang did was you gave it a list of URLs and it went out and downloaded and transformed them. So it's, it's a bit like our programming assignment, although the details differ quite a bit. And uh, so here's the Image Stream Rx Java 1 implementation, which as you can see, has a constructor that just calls up to the superclass to initialize the, the filter array and the essentially the list of URLs that we're going to be processing. Here's the process stream method. That, of course, is always the hook method into the, the uh, processing for a given implementation for the image stream gang case study. First thing we do is we get the list of URLs we want to download and process, and we use from iterable. So from iterable is going to essentially create an observable that will emit all the URLs that's in that list. And then we use our good friend, the flat map concurrency idiom. I should probably say concurrency idiom. And what this is going to do is it's going to uh, essentially do much like what we've been taking a look at with the other examples of the concurrency idiom. Namely, it's going to take each URL that we've got here, and then it's going to convert each URL into an observable using the concurrency idiom. And notice it's doing that very fast use of just. It just says, do this. And that's because it's going to run in the assembly time thread context. And then we're going to use something called compose. I really haven't talked much about compose, which I probably should have. But it's a very interesting operator in RxJava that you can use to make custom operations. And what we do here is we're going to use something called common pool observable. And you can see that the common pool observable is simply going to go ahead and, and subscribe this computation to run, in this case, in the common fork join pool. So before, we've been using other thread pools that come out of the box with RxJava, like computations or IO. In this case, we're going to use the fork join common pool, and we connect that using the schedulers from factory method to say, essentially, subscribe the computation to run in the common fork join pool. And by using compose, we can kind of make this a library that we can reuse. And it's, it's a little bit cleaner than calling subscribe on each time. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use the filter operation to essentially ignore any images that have already been cached locally. That's very much like the other uses of the filter that we've done before. So this is going to filter out anything that's not uh, that, that's been downloaded previously. Then what we're going to do is we're going to call the map operation. So this particular URL that we emitted up here with the just call will then be downloaded by blocking download. And you can see that the blocking download method essentially uses the call in managed block helper method on the blocking task wrapper class. And if we go ahead and take a look at call in managed block, the key thing it's doing there is it's using the fork join pools managed block method. And if you recall what that does, if you remember back a number of weeks at this point, that essentially is able to auto expand the number of threads in the common fork join pool so that if you have block IO, which we do in this case, that that will ensure that we don't run out of threads. OK, so what we do then is we take the result that comes back after we've downloaded something, which is, go is going to come back. If you take a look over here, let's just remind ourselves what blocking download does. Blocking download gives us an image. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to take that image and we're going to call the flat map operation on it and apply the various filters. So let's go ahead and see what apply filters does. You can see uh, apply filters takes an image and it goes ahead and converts the, the uh, filters that we have. We'll say we have three filters or whatever. We turns those into an observable. And then for each filter, we also use the, 
the concurrency idiom. Uh, so we should say here, use the Rx Java concurrency, oops, the Rx Java flat map concurrency idiom to transform uh, each of these transform an observable by applying a set of operations to each item emitted by the source. So once again, we're using the idiom. We say, take the filter, emit it as the single result from that observable, use the common pool, common fork join pool again, in order to run this concurrently, and then do the make filter decorator with image method in a background thread. So once again, you can see how we're using these things in a nested recursive way to use the, the concurrent, the, the flat map concurrency idiom. And in fact, you can see here, we're using the flat map concurrency idiom sort of in two ways. We're using it for each URL. We run those things in different threads. And then for each filter, we apply the transform in the background also using that idiom. So it's kind of a nested use of the idiom. So there's a lot of concurrency going on here is the bottom line. What we end up with when, when we're all done with this is going to be an observable of images that were all downloaded and filtered concurrently. And then we bring this all together with yet another method called reduce with, which is very similar to reduce. And you can see here, what we do is we pass in the array list for the image we want, and we're going to go ahead and append each element. So take a look at append. Append is just going to add each element to the end of the list and return the list. So what we end up with here is a single to an array list of images. And then in this particular example, we're gonna use blocking subscribe because we don't want this to, to go any further until we're done processing. And that'll essentially wait for all the processing to take place and it'll print the results out. So this is one example of how to use Rx Java in the context of doing the, the image stream gang processing. We also have another example, and this is called uh, image stream rx java 2 so let's go ahead and take a look at that one as well because it's just ever so different from what we looked at so over here you can see that we have our constructor which stashes the parameters up in fields in the image stream gang framework we have process stream and what this example is going to demonstrate is a different way of doing the processing and i haven't really talked about this in detail but it's, it's very cool it's called parallel flowables and parallel flowables were added in, later in Rx Java in order to make the concurrency idiom that we've looked at be supported better and more overtly in the form of, of an actual parallel processing abstraction called parallel flowable. So let's go ahead and take a look at how parallel flowables can be used because they're, they're pretty interesting. So here we go ahead and get the list of URLs like we did before. As before, we convert that list of URLs into a, an aggregate object, which in this case is called a flowable. So a flowable is basically an observable that has some other properties, parallel processing being one of them, as well as also supporting so-called back pressure. So parallel flowable, or sorry, we have a flowable at this point. And then what we do is we use the parallel factory method, which is a bit like the dot parallel factory method on a Java stream. So what we're saying here is now we're going to have a parallel flowable and we're going to use the compose method to run that parallel flowable in the flowable, I'm sorry, using flowable operations. So flowable run on says, run these computations in parallel in this particular example in the common fork join pool. So that's what we're doing. We're saying run this thing in the common fork join pool. And then what happens here is all the code from this point down to where we say dot sequential, everything between sort of here and here is all gonna run in parallel. And as you can see here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the filtering in parallel. We're gonna do the mapping in parallel. We're gonna do the flat mapping in parallel. So all that computation gets done in parallel. And we don't have to use that somewhat wacky flat map concurrency idiom now, it's, it's done more overtly by the parallel flowable class. And so all those things run in parallel. So this is basically kind of doing like a, a fork. So all these things get run in parallel in the common parallel flowable pool using the common fork join pool. 
And then when we want to join everything back together again, we use the dot sequential method. And what that says essentially is collect all the results together. And so now we're going to have a flowable of images that have been downloaded and processed in parallel. And once we come out of that, then we can collect those things up into an array list by adding each element. And we use blocking subscribe to wait for all the computations to be done. So the key point of this example, this RX uh, image stream RX Java 2 code is to demonstrate the use of parallel flowables. Now, I, I was going to give you an assignment using parallel flowables, but we're kind of out of time for the course, so we're not going to get a chance to do that. But uh, it would actually be fun if you just want to, uh, to learn a few more things to see what would be required to take your current assignment for programming in order to and be able to modify it in order to do the computations with parallel flowables as opposed to the rx java flat map concurrency idiom um, the computations that they basically run in roughly the same amount of time it just one is more clearly being parallel when you look at it carefully to see how it's going to work and just just for your edification there are also examples of doing all this kind of stuff with project reactor instead of using rx java and uh, if you were to look at this carefully, you would see it's very much the same thing. There's a few me methods that are different. They don't have a compose method in Project Reactor. They have something called transform deferred. And um, they have a block method as opposed to having blocking subscribe. But other things are, are very, very similar. So Rx Java and Project Reactor are very close, but not identical. They're like fraternal twins as opposed to identical twins. They're not identical, but they, they share a lot of the same DNA.